Welcome to Statistics for Health Professionals. So today what we're going to cover is just a basic introduction to, to statistics and then also levels of measurement. So stats can be a scary topic for people who have never done stats before, but in reality it's actually very important for health professionals. It's vital up to understanding research which is going to be useful in clinical settings. So for anyone who's thinking of going into a medical field or an allied medical field, stats is going to be important. So there are going to be two sides of stats. Think of the back side, which involves a lot of complex mathematical equations, and then the side of actually running statistics, which isn't necessarily so scary because a computer does all of the work for you. So what I want you to do is think of a car. Most people just need to know how to drive a car. They don't necessarily need to understand what's going on underneath the hood. They don't need to understand how an engine works. In this class, we're not going to go underneath the hood. Um, basically what I'm saying is, in this metaphor, I'm not going to teach you how engines work. What I am going to teach you is how to interpret stats and how to run simple statistical tests. All of this can be done with a computer. So in essence, what I'm going to be teaching you in this class is actually how to drive a car. So once again, and despite how this graph looks, stats doesn't need to be scary. And by the end of this course, you'll understand this graph without any second guesses. Some tests that you will learn include correlations and then also regression. So in this, there's different types of regressions. We'll focus on correlation. We will go over linear regression. And we'll also talk about um, logistic regressions right here. Okay. So you'll also learn tests that determine the differences between groups on certain variables that you might found, find interesting. So once again, I want to highlight that you can do stats. And by the end of this lecture, you'll actually do statistics. So don't psych yourself out of being able to do statistics before this class is even started. If you want to be successful in this class, and if you want to learn how to do statistics, I would recommend doing this. I would recommend doing all this data exercises that I put up, reading the text that is going to be provided for you, and then actually reading research to look at selected statistical procedures. Again, you can understand statistics. What you need to do is understand why researchers did what they did and then what the results actually mean based on what they did. Let's talk about measurement. So measurement is the process of comparing a value to a standard. So for example, comparing weight with the standard of a pound when stepping on a scale. So the standard is the force of gravity on our body and we step on a scale, that's just giving us a measurement. A measurement value. So what we're going to cover today is variables. We're going to talk about independent versus dependent variables, which is very important. We're going to talk about categorical versus continuous data. And we're going to cover levels of measurement. So data is, is just the result of a measurement. So for example, that would be just reading the number off of a scale. Now what statistics is, it's the mathematical technique by which data are organized, treated, and presented for interpretation. And this is what you'll be learning in this class. Along with evaluation, so evaluation is the process of determining the worth of the data. And you might get more information on this on, in um, research methods classes. So this course should go hand in hand with research methods courses. So basically what researchers do is they gather data, they run statistics, and then they interpret the results. So variables are when we measure things like human performance, disease incidents, and they're basically characteristics of a person, place, or object that can assume more than one value. So variables might be the time it takes for a person to run one mile. That would be a performance variable. Other variables might be prevalence of cancer in rural New York. And there's different types of variables, and you're going to need to learn the difference between these in order to be successful in this class. You might have heard these terms before. The two terms are independent and dependent variables. When you're deciding whether a variable is independent or dependent, Think about whether or not you're manipulating a variable, okay? So for example, if somebody was doing two resistance training routines 
and we wanted to see how much muscle mass a person put on, the dependent variable in that case would be muscle mass, and the independent variable might be the treatment group that the person is in. So maybe high resistance or low resistance. With independent variables, we may be able to assume a cause and effect on the dependent variable. Independent variables are also associated with different responses on the dependent variable. So in this case, it might be um, different levels of muscle mass. And again, examples include the treatment group, maybe a population group, or maybe exposures to different conditions. The outcome variable is the dependent variable. So it's the characteristic that's expected to change as a result of an experimental treatment. Dependent variables may also vary across populations as a result of exposure to certain conditions. Now here are some examples. I'll pause for a second after I read them out so that you can think of what one is the independent variable and then also which one is the dependent variable. So Let's read these out. So do children play sport? Do children who play sports have different self-esteem from those who do not? So why don't you take a second and write down what you think is the independent variable and what do you think the dependent variable is? Okay. Does excess caloric consumption make people gain weight? Do the same thing. What do you think the dependent variable is and what do you think the independent variable is? Do individuals in a high intensity interval training group achieve faster fitness than those who don't? Are people who have cats happier than those that don't? And are nurses more physically active during their shift than doctors? So if we were going to look at do children who play sports have different self-esteem than those who do not? In this case, the dependent variable is going to be self-esteem. And the treatment group in this case might be comparing stu uh, students who actually do play sports and those who do not. So that would be two groups. Does excess caloric consumption make people gain weight? In this case, the dependent variable is weight gain, whereas what might be manipulated is caloric consumption. Do individuals who do HIT achieve faster fitness than those who don't? In this case, some measure of fitness would be the dependent variable. And then the treatment group would be either do people do high intensity interval training or do they not? Are people who have cats happier than those who don't? In this case, the dependent variable we have would be happiness, which we might measure and then compare among people that do have cats and those that don't have cats. Are nurses more physically active during their shift than doctors? In this case, the dependent variable might be physical activity. And we're comparing that between nurses and doctors. So moving on to categorical versus continuous data. In general, variables either represent measurement on a continuous scale or they represent information about same categorical characteristics. So continuous data, some examples might be height, weight, distance ran, speed or velocity. When you think of categorical data, think of how you can put people into different categories. So for example, gender, occupation, marital status, those are all categories that people could be put in along with maybe meeting physical activity recommendations. You might also take continuous data such as maybe push-ups done which could range from zero to infinity technically and then group people into uh, different categories, so high fit, moderate fit, and low fit. So this was categorical versus continuous data, but we also have different levels of measurement. So levels of measurement represent different levels of precision in gathering data and measuring variables. So different levels of measurement include nominal, ordinal, interval, and then ratio. Nominal variables are variables that allow for mutual exclusivity. They can be measured only in terms of whether the individual items belong to some distinctly different categories. And the defining feature of nominal level data 
is that there's no rank or order of categories. So examples might be gender, race, or city. So if we were looking at city, there's no meaningful way to order them. Nominal variables are the simplest and least precise. We can, what we can do with these is frequency count. So we can count how many people are in a certain category, such as gender, and we can report it. It's useful in making differentiations between objects or people and reporting their frequency. So here are some examples of nominal variables. So maybe a person is in an experimental group, a placebo group, or a regular routine group. Gender, once again, where we can just change, because um, when you're running statistics, statistical, statistical software won't recognize male or female. It recognizes numbers. So we need to change these to numbers. And then we need to know what the numbers also represent. So again, these are examples of nominal variables. When we have ordinal variables, ordinal variables allow us to rank the order of the items we measure in terms of which has less and which has more of the quality represented by the variable, but they don't allow us to say how much more. So a pretty typical example in research might be socioeconomic status, where we might say low, middle, or high income. It involves data that may be arranged in some order, but differences between data values values either cannot be determined or meaningless. So ranking people by their skill level in a sport would be an example. So if we took eight basketball players, we could rank them in order of their skill. Who's the best and who's the worst? But the differences between these groups, these people, are not necessarily meaningful. So for example, the difference in skill between person number one and person number two is not going to be the same difference between seven and eight. For example, you might have seven exceptional basketball players, and then you have one really bad basketball player. The gap between seven and eight might be very large, versus the gaps between one and two, two and three, three and four might not be that large. Some examples of ordinal variables might be this. So rank and army, socioeconomic status, and then health status. So for example, is the difference between poor and very poor the same as the difference between excellent and good? Probably not. The next level of uh, measurement is interval variables. Interval variables allow us not only to rank the order of items that are measured, but also quantify and compare the sizes of differences between them. So for example, temperature, that would be an interval variable. In this case, the calculation is actually meaningful. But there's no true zero starting point, and the ratios don't necessarily make sense. So for example, um, 100 degrees is not two times hotter than 50 degrees, just like how 50 degrees is not two times hotter than 25 degrees. The ratios don't necessarily make sense with interval level data. Ratio variables are very similar to interval variables. In addition to all the properties of interval, inter interval variables, they feature an identifiable absolute zero. Thus, they allow for statements such as x is two times more than y. So, Typical examples of ratio scales are measurements of time or space. So if somebody ran a sprint in 20 seconds compared to somebody who ran a sprint in 40 seconds, the 20 second sprinter ran twice as fast as the 40 second sprinter. Again, ratio level data involves data where a true, with a true zero starting point, where the zero indicates that none of the quantity is present. It's the most precise and most useful level. Differences in ratios are actually meaningful. Again, the 20 second and 40 second sprint is meaningful. So what's the difference between interval and ratio data? I've stated examples like this before. So interval data, again, the differences between the intervals make sense, but the ratios do not. Ratio data, now the ratios make sense, and they also become important. So this is your, your first introduction to statistics. And just to um, reiterate, don't be afraid of statistics. What I want you to understand is what variables are. Your homework is going to highlight the differences between independent and dependent variables, as well as categorical versus continuous data, and then levels of measurement. So what I'm going to do is this will be shared. This data set is going to be shared with you. But what you're going to do is download this data set for Stata, the software that you're going to be using. 
So everything that I show you, you're going to be able to walk through on your own. So this is what Stata looks like. So this is just the general social survey um, data set, which is collected every two years. So let's say that we wanted to look at a variable. So if we looked at the variable cat, that measures whether a person has a cat. And we can get this information by typing codebook cat into Stata. So if we just do this, codebook cat. And then if we look at this, we can see frequency of the people that do not have a cat. And then we can see the frequency of the people that do have a cat. You're not going to need to worry about this. This just means they weren't asked the question or the person didn't answer. So we have two different options. Either you do have a cat or you don't have a cat. And there's different ways that we can actually look at this information. When we look at it, we see that a zero means, again, I said that um, Stata can't actually do statistics on words, so it has to change things to numbers. So in this case, zero means does not have and one means does have. So we can look at this information in other meaningful ways. But now we know that this means does not have and has. We can also type in tab cat. So that just means we're tabulating. Tab cat. And we're really seeing the same information here. So we can see right now, actually, cumulative frequency. We can see that 59.73% of the people who were surveyed did not have a cat of the total 673 people that were surveyed. So what you're gonna do is try, for your homework assignment, you're gonna try the same thing with the variable dog. So all that you would do is type in, instead of tab cat, you would type in tab dog. So you just type in tab dog and then hit enter. I won't do that because I want you to do that for your homework assignment. And then the last thing that you're going to do is try the same thing with the variable health. So again, you would type in the same thing, tab health, and then hit enter. So that's your homework assignment. Based on this is going to be what you are going to actually use with the software. And you're going to answer some specific questions based on that.